from a political perspective, uh, Sweden and Finland uh, have been perceived as members of the West. Mm -hmm. uh, members of the West that had um, different uh, security arrangements, but that were cooperating uh, with NATO countries uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. And that were very close, uh, interconnected and interlinked politically and militarily in the Nordic Baltic region. And they were, as you said, um, uh, greeted with open arms. Hello, my name is Nicholas Furnival. You are watching or listening to an OSW interview. Today I'm talking to OSW's Deputy Director, Justina Gotkowska, and we'll be discussing Sweden joining NATO. Hi, Justina. Hello. So we met in April 2023 to discuss Finland joining NATO. And I asked you, when is Sweden going to join? And a lot of time has passed since then. So why has it taken so long? Uh, we have faced uh, the Turkish opposition to Swedish membership mm -hmm. and uh, Turkey trying to uh, gain as much as it can, not only uh, from Sweden, but only from the US in terms mm -hmm. of political concessions, economic concessions, some kind of military concessions. And therefore, uh, Swedish membership uh, was not possible uh, at the uh, Vilnius uh, NATO summit mm -hmm. uh, in uh, July 2023. The process took a bit longer, but after the summit, um, uh, President uh, Erdogan uh, said that uh, he will try to speed up the process. And eventually that happened in uh, January when the Turkish uh, parliament uh, ratified or agreed to the ratification of the accession protocol of Sweden. And a few days later, President uh, Erdogan uh, signed the uh, ratification document. So now we are, we are waiting only for Hungary. Mm -hmm. So some of these military concessions you mentioned, I guess the most famous one is Turkey. Uh, well, shortly afterwards received F-16s or received the promise of F-16s. But Sweden had to make concessions as well. Why was it so enthusiastic about joining NATO, that it waited so long and it made concessions to Turkey. Why does it need to be in NATO? Uh, Sweden, uh, first on concessions, um, Sweden uh, changed its law on um, uh, terrorist organizations mm -hmm. or fighting uh, terrorism uh, according to uh, Turkish requests. Um, the Swedish government undertook um, some actions uh, diminishing the activities of uh, Syrian uh, or Kurdish organizations um, that um, worked uh, or were active uh, in Sweden uh, and Sweden agreed also to export uh, weapons um, uh, to uh, to Turkey um, because it hasn't uh, informally there was a decision on, on not doing so before mm -hmm. and uh, from the US as you rightly put that uh, the US um, the D DCA uh, the US agency that is responsible for uh, approving uh, uh, sales of uh, foreign sales of uh, uh, US equipment agreed to the sales of uh, F-16s to Turkey, but this needs to be uh, approved and mm -hmm. accepted uh, by the U.S. Congress. We'll see how that will go um, uh, quite soon, I suppose. Why Sweden um, uh, was waiting um, patiently mm -hmm. uh, to join NATO, uh, from the Swedish perspective, the Russian invasion of Ukraine changed uh, very uh, a lot mm -hmm. and uh, changed the uh, threat perception in Sweden and in Finland. Um, it was Finland uh, which started the process, which decided very early on that uh, after Russia attacked Ukraine, uh, smaller on, and medium states in Russia's uh, neighborhood cannot be secure, um, mm. that something like that um, uh, will not be repeated uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, Finnish policy cultivated until February 2022 uh, with a double track approach, um, talking to Russia. Russia, having a limited cooperation, political, economic cooperation with Russia, but on the other hand, uh, investing in own military capabilities was uh, not sustainable anymore, mm -hmm. uh, because this cooperation with Russia can always be uh, suspended uh, by, by Moscow, and uh, it will not help Finland, uh, which was at that time out uh, um, beside or beyond the alliance, not a part of the of NATO, uh, that would not help Finland.
Uh, so the, the, was the, fir the first issue was the Finnish decision on NATO membership, which had an influence, uh, additional influence on Sweden, uh, because Sweden, of course, um, changes perception of the security in the region, mm -hmm. uh, changes perception of uh, how far Russia may um, go in the future um, in its aggression, not only against Ukraine, but also against uh, NATO member states. Uh, but also uh, Sweden, the loss of Finland uh, as a as a part which was a um, the priority partner of Sweden and military cooperation and political security uh, security policy cooperation was uh, essential because these were basically two countries that were outside of NATO in the region and mm. uh, Finnish decisions uh, decision to uh, join NATO uh, put Sweden in a very uncomfortable position as the only country outside of of uh, the alliance uh, in the Nordic Baltic region and uh, from a Swedish perspective uh, that um, such a solution to or such a situation was unsustainable and uh, would not guarantee Swedish uh, security in the long run. And therefore, uh, that was an additional argument for Sweden to decide uh, to uh, join NATO. We need to uh, come back to um, uh, spring 2022, when in Sweden, the Social Democrats were still um, uh, part of the government and uh, took that decision, which was a difficult one for them, because Sweden Swedish uh, Social Democrats was, were the only party in Sweden, uh, the, the only biggest party in Sweden, which was split uh, with regard to NATO membership mm -hmm. and formally for years um, was against it. Uh, so there was a, a process inside the, the the party itself. But then the decision was made as Sweden, Stockholm, Social Democratic government back then thought there is no other solution to guarantee uh, Swedish security uh, in the future. And then the process of negotiating um, the path to the membership with um, uh, Turkey started first in the triangle uh, together with Finland and then um, uh, in the talks uh, with Turkey. That took a longer time than expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, we are very close to formal Swedish uh, membership in the alliance now. On the other hand, uh, perhaps with the exception of Turkey and maybe Hungary, Sweden was welcomed into NATO with open arms. Um, why? What does Sweden have to offer? Does it have a powerful army? What will Sweden be doing in NATO and why is that thing so important? I think there are three reasons. The first one is political, the second is uh, geographical location and mm -hmm. the third is military. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, from a political perspective, uh, Sweden and Finland uh, have been perceived as members of the West. Mm -hmm. uh, members of the West that had um, different uh, security arrangements, but that were cooperating uh, with NATO countries uh, for a while mm -hmm. and that were very close, uh, interconnected and interlinked politically and military in the Nordic Baltic region. The two countries joining NATO was uh, for many allies, uh, especially in the region on the eastern flank, on the north northern flank, an obvious step for both countries. And they were, as you said, um, uh, greeted with open arms. But um, both countries, um, um, and their geographical location is also crucial for NATO, uh, for Russia, um, for um, conducting op military operations in the region. And uh, two countries joining NATO um, make the defense of the Baltic states of Poland the uh, much more easier. Mm -hmm. and makes the defense make the defense of the mili NATO military operations in the high north, uh, meaning North Norway, much easier. It limits uh, Russian um, uh, room for maneuver mm -hmm. uh, uh, in terms of military actions uh, in the Baltic, Nordic Baltic uh, region, uh, and from a military perspective, it's uh, both countries also um, provide NATO with um, military capabilities with regard uh, uh, to Sweden, especially with the Air Force and with the Navy. With regard to Finland, uh, these are especially um, land capabilities and uh, and. Uh, uh, and the Air Force. By their membership, both countries uh, are part of NATO uh, defense plans. Uh, they will be even closer cooperating with the Baltic states, with Poland, mm -hmm. with Norway, and uh, are on the way of a closer cooperation with the US, which is a key ally uh, in NATO. And uh, this happens, uh, this 
um, Finnish and Swedish cooperation with the U.S. is of crucial importance for political, but especially for military reasons. And uh, both countries have uh, introduced uh, parallel processes. Into they have been integrating even more uh, into NATO structures, um, political and military processes. And on the other hand, they were negotiating with the U.S. Um, uh, security agreements that uh, allow the U.S. to increase military cooperation with both countries and military presence mm -hmm. uh, on the territory of Sweden and Finland, uh, which is of huge deterrence value and deterrence and defense value um, uh, from um, in the region as it uh, gives a sign to Russia that the U.S. will be there. Uh, we will have U.S. presence, we will have U.S. forces on the ground, and there that presence will be interlinked within wider U.S. presence on the eastern flank in Poland, especially and uh, in the Baltic um, in the Baltic states. So the pace of events and security and pol uh, security policy for the two countries have been immense in the recent two years, mm -hmm. uh, both with regard to joining NATO and in uh, developing military cooperation, especially with the U.S., but also uh, with uh, other other biggest allies um, in, in NATO. How important is this Swedish, very large Swedish island, Gotland, in this geographical aspect? Mm. Uh, Gotland uh, was a, is a Swedish island located strategically in the southern part of the of the Baltic Sea, and before Swedish accession to NATO, uh, Swedish military experts um, uh, were uh, devising scenarios on how Gotland may be used. Uh, uh, by Russia, for example, in mm -hmm. case of Sweden be, being non-aligned, being non, um, uh, being uh, uh, not a member of NATO, mm -hmm. uh, and the use of this island or the occupation um, of this island by Russian forces, which could happen quite quickly, mm -hmm. and uh, the um, placing on the island uh, Russian uh, air defense systems, uh, long-range missile systems, mm -hmm. would allow Russia to block. Long uh, part of the southern uh, uh, southern Baltic Sea and would bring Russia um, uh, huge military gains uh, and would uh, make it difficult for NATO uh, to uh, conduct military operations uh, uh, in northern Poland and the Bal uh, in the Baltic states. So Sweden was before joining NATO or before before uh, the decision on joining NATO was fearing uh, the such a scenario was afraid of it and was uh, uh, started to uh, to prepare itself for such a scenario when uh, Russia could attack Gotland, could take uh, this piece of land, could use it for their own purpose, mm -hmm. and at the same time that would not constitute a situation in which NATO would be uh, would be attacked uh, mm -hmm. and that would and require a response. Mm -hmm. So and uh, therefore also from the NATO perspective, such a situation, such a scenario was quite uh, quite dangerous. Because because it would have an effect uh, on um, uh, and would limit NATO military operations. Uh, but now I think the situation um, you know, with regard to Gotland uh, will be a bit different mm -hmm. uh, because that will be a NATO uh, island and an mm -hmm. attack on Gotland would mean an attack on, on NATO. And that would, uh, we will not have these green scenarios that Sweden was afraid of uh, before uh, before joining NATO. And could we say that an attack on Gotland is less likely with Sweden in NATO? I would say so, mm -hmm. uh, that it's, it's less likely. But if, um, if Russia decides to frontally attack NATO to go for uh, for a full confrontation. We cannot not exclude scenarios that Russia might uh, attempt and try to take Gotland and place uh, uh, certain military capabilities on the island. But if Russia would like to use some gray zone scenarios, mm -hmm. it is uh, after Sweden joins NATO, this scenario would will be excluded with uh, Russia um, uh, taking Gotland um, Island. So I think here the situation of Sweden uh, with regard to the strategic importance of Gotland improves because uh, 
the gray scenario, um, gray zone scenario, uh, will will not materialize. But as as I said, if Russia decides to frontally uh, attack NATO, mm-hmm. I think uh, this scenario needs to be taken into consideration as well. Okay, so one final question uh, before we end. For many years, Sweden decided to remain non-aligned, to remain outside of NATO. And now NATO is going to be a reality for Swedish citizens. How are they accepting this? Are they still happy with the decision? Mm. I think that the acceptance of the um, uh, of Sweden's uh, membership in, in NATO was uh, pretty high in 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just after Sweden uh, decided to apply uh, officially uh, for a NATO membership, uh, and uh, um, I think the numbers uh, uh, were about uh, were um, between 60 and 70 percent uh, of uh, the population mm-hmm. uh, supporting this decision. Uh, but then when Sweden started to to negotiate with Turkey uh, uh, on um, concessions that uh, mm-hmm. and changes in law in Swedish law and uh, what Sweden should undertake to uh, satisfy Turkish demands. Then uh, the, uh, some discussions uh, started, and especially among the uh, left uh, um, social democratic left leaning voters, uh, support for NATO membership uh, slightly decreased. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the longer process um, uh, lasted, the the, uh, the acceptance of the Swedish membership in NATO uh, decreased a, b- a bit, uh, but it's still uh, pretty high because I think that Swedes are aware of this of the gravity of the situation mm-hmm. and the p- political elites and military uh, representatives, uh, the commanders of the Swedish armed forces, uh, try to convince the Swedish population that the situation uh, is. Uh, serious, Mm -hmm. uh, that Russian attack on Ukraine constitutes a break in the international relations, Mm -hmm. that if Ukraine um, does not win this war and if if Russia uh, wins it, um, we will have further problems in Europe with Russia, with an aggressive Russia, and we cannot... uh, uh, exclude scenarios of Russia's aggressive actions in the Nordic Baltic region. So now mm-hmm. uh, we had a security conference uh, that uh, takes pl- place yearly in Selen, the most important one uh, on security issues in Sweden. Uh, and we had um, then um, um, statements from the uh, military representatives and government re- representatives on the fact that Swedish uh, population should prepare for war and that Sweden uh, will take will uh, take part uh, in a, uh, in a poss- possible conflict in the Nordic Baltic region so uh, the Swedish government the current government which is a conservative liberal government uh, takes the situation uh, quite seriously and this is reflected in the defense spending this year 2024 the current government uh, wants to spend 11 billion dollars for mm-hmm. defense uh, meaning 2.1%. Mm-hmm. And this is a high, high, a pretty high increase. Uh, before the Russian invasion, uh, Sweden spent uh, much, much less um, on defense uh, in spite of uh, treating in general the security situation in the Nordic Baltic region seriously. It was only 1.31, 1, 1.4% of GDP. So you see the rise in defense spending uh, and you see the, uh, the discussions in public Public on what role Sweden uh, will ha- will play in NATO in mm-hmm. uh, the case on, of conflict, and Sweden perceives itself as a country not as a front uh, front uh, uh, country, uh, but as a, uh, as the rear of the no- northeastern flank, as mm-hmm. a country that will be needed in any case in any scenarios uh, for. Uh, troop movements uh, for allies, uh, both on the eastern flank and uh, the major western allies um, that will use Swedish air bases, uh, Swedish uh, naval bases, uh, uh, Swedish garrisons and uh, Swedish territory and airspace to conduct operations against Russia. So Sweden is 
uh, and this government is very well aware of the role it might play in the future conflict with Russia and tries to convince the population of the gravity of the situation uh, and tries to improve, um, to pre- tries to prepare itself for the situation and uh, tries to increase also uh, the civilian military cooperation uh, within this, um, the total defense concept uh, that is uh, pretty unique to the Nordic states and uh, includes a wider approach, civilian military to facing uh, military threats and challenges. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Justina. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this discussion, why don't you watch our review of 2023, which is available on screen now?